All right, guys, this is a little short video on how we're going to repair the rear bunk of our hybrid camper. So I got it folded down here. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it here or not, but it started to delaminate down here after I was up on here working on it. I was trying to do some, finish up some caulking around the edges. So what I'm going to do is do a step-by-step -step video, starting with taking this whole bunk off on the back because I do need to remove this channel on this one all the way around it to make sure I get that uh, delamination taken care of. So first thing I'm going to do is remove this trim that goes down through here. This is going to allow me access to the screws that holds it to the actual hinge back in here. So I'll uh, get this done then I'll come back with after that. And I'll show you until I do it after I take this piece off. I'll show you what it looks like. So I got the trim off here. Took it off. Took the mattress out. Shoved it inside. This rubber flap actually folds back. And it reveals these screws down through here. Actually one of them looks like a pop rivet. Starting to wonder if this hasn't been taken apart before. So I'll have to drill this pop rivet out. Now I'll take those screws out down through there. The front side were all screws. So whenever I put those back, I'll put some long wood screws back into it because I ain't gonna put this full of wood. As you can see, this right here was extremely rotted. And there, that's something of the screws there. They were actually to the point where they wouldn't even come out. So now that I got those out, got this trim off, I'll lay it to the side. I'll reuse this trim put back down through there I'm going to uh, get a drill bit I'll be drilling this pop road out then I'll be taking those screws out down through there for this hinge then I'm going to set this aside and start disassembling it okay guys so I got this off highly recommend having some help for this I did it by myself I'm not really sure how I put a two before in the center of it to support it. Literally just went down through. There's a pop rivet here on the very ends. Went back and removed the screws down through the middles. And then <clears throat> you can see over here, there's where they all mounted. There's a pop rivet here and a pop rivet here. Looks like there's a couple more here. I am going to have to drill out to get this channel loose. But I am going to be removing this piece of channel across the bottom. I'll be removing this piece of channel here so far up until I find good dry wood up in here, which feels like it's going to be back up in here somewhere. But we all have plenty of good meat left up here. But you can see right here, this is extremely soft. It's starting to actually bow. I could probably almost pry that bottom section off. There is a piece of metal in there. Each one of these have a metal uh, framing around them. And there should be a piece of metal framing right here in the middle. Yeah, you can actually feel it right here. But you can see these here were actually plumbed. Oh, oh, there we go. You can see how wet that was. From where it's just leaked and a lot of water and it's just, just peeling up and out of there. So, next step is I'm gonna get a uh, piece of wood for a straight edge. I'm going to pull this back to find where dry wood is. I'll put a piece of wood across it for a straight edge. I'll take my oscillating tool and cut this at a straight edge across it to uh, get all this rod of wood out of the way and now I can start repairing it. So I'll check back in with you after this. So this is the bottom piece of tr that trim off. It goes across the bottom of the door, took it off, had to drill out the pop rivets. So you can see it's got a good bit of nastiness inside of it. I want to clean it out real good. Wire brush probably. But now I'm going to start moving this back. I'm going to go ahead and drill these two pop rivets on this side and take that top screw out. Main reason I've done this is because this channel lays like this on there and that front piece of paneling right here for the front lip the outside layer 
was actually out of this lip right here on this piece of channel. So I had, in order to make sure that that was sealed good and didn't leak anymore, I had to take this off on this one. The front one didn't ever come out of this channel, so I was able to put enough glue in it, hopefully to hold it in place, which I am thinking about adding another piece of trim across the front of it, just to sandwich it and make sure. But uh, this one I had to take apart to make sure I got it back in this channel and took care of in that aspect of things. So. I'm gonna go another couple little steps here and then I'll stop and catch up with you guys. Okay, so what I did is <clears throat> I've been poking around here and filling. Feels like it's pretty solid up into here, all the way across. So basically what I've done is I went a couple inches past where I felt anything soft. And the last thing I felt soft right in here. I did start peeling this back. So you can see it's pretty wet and then even right in here on the sides you can see where it's kind of dry it's the reason it leads me to think that most of this is all sweating and it's just drawing moisture which apparently these campers are notorious for now we didn't realize that until after we bought it we've had a couple other campers in the past and they were just regular solid hard shell campers so what i'm doing is going to pull this back i made a cut down the edge of this <clears throat> took the board measure back 15 inches on both sides clamp that down use that board for a straight edge i took a <clears throat> utility knife cut across the edge of it made a scar mark so that way i can pull this vinyl off to that line then i'll go back and use this same board for my oscillating tool and i'll cut what wood i can off then i'll start removing all the rest of that material so I'm gonna go ahead and get this all pulled off and then I'll show you where I'm at then. So you can see, here's a little bit better example. I haven't cut it yet with the oscillating tool. But uh, I got a couple inches up past where all the wet wood was. That was the main thing I wanted to do like I did on the front. That way <clears throat> this meat up here is still good on this wood above this board and it's still solid. This way we'll kind of combine the two and if anything it's going to stiffen it up even more. But you can see this stuff just peeling off. It's just super saturated and wet. So now I'm going to take the oscillating tool and cut this right down the edge of this board. Then I'll come back through and remove all of this and uh, start doing all the disassembly and hopefully I can get all this put back together before the end of the day. So look how easy it just flaking off. That's how bad it was. Another reason I wanted to go far up like that is because what I ran into on the front one, the top layer actually looked good, but as I got down a little lower, it looked a little worse. So it's nice and sunny out today too. Hopefully it'll dry everything out when I get down here in the bottom and we'll be good to go. I used the oscillating tool to cut that straight edge down through there. Went ahead and drilled out the edges here. These uh, pop rivets that were on the ends, I'm gonna take that screw out there. But as I was cutting it, it felt like a lot of fresh wood in there. I wanted to show you how soft this was right here in the middle. You can actually see it given. So, with the oscillating tool, I literally bought this just for this project, so. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this removed and then I'll show you what's underneath of this wood. So as you can see, just a little bit of time it's been out here in the sun, this is actually starting to dry out halfway decent. <clears throat> but I highly recommend getting a good putty knife. Picked that up for like, I don't know, eight bucks at Lowe's. It really helped me pry this stuff off it does. And as you can see, I'm just peeling this off right now. But you really need that putty knife to get in there and get all this crap off the uh, metal framing. 
that's what I was running into on the front one where I didn't take it off the, the whole bunk off the camper. It's having a hard time getting all this glue and leftover wood like you can see when I pull this off. There'll be some left. See how there's some wood right there? It's extremely hard to get that peeled off there without a good putty knife. I used the oscillating tool a good bit on the front one to try to get most of it. But it was still extremely hard to get loose. Harder than I thought. And this one's going to be a little different too, it looks like, because that's where the mounts are for the extra supports for the uh, latches. But, like I said, I highly recommend getting a good putty knife to help get all this stuff off through here in the corners. As you can see, as I'm peeling this off, it does have the styrofoam underneath of it. Um, I'll go back in here and score this with a knife and remove all that insulation because <clears throat> it is saturated with water from where it's sweated and leaked and that's most of the time probably where most of this rot's coming from is it uh, holding the water in that styrofoam but I'll do both sides I'll move this piece of wood the, the styrofoam down and then there's another piece of this wood underneath the styrofoam on this front side right here Actually, you see that's starting to peel away a lot more down there now. So I want to give you a little update there now. As soon as I get to the styrofoam and get it removed, I'll show you what it looks like under it. So I got that first layer off. It does take a little bit. <clears throat> you can see there's the supports for the latches on the front side. I'm going to go in and remove this. The wood came off on this side a lot better than it did that side. This is still stuck pretty good but I wasn't too worried about it because it's all getting taken out that styrofoam is so I'm going to start removing this and all I'm going to do is take my utility knife there and just cut on through there and I'll start going in and Popping it loose. Maybe. By I get all this loose, I start getting on the bottom side. Oh, it went flying. You can see how rotted it is down in there. And you can see it's pushing through on that bottom side pretty good. So I'm going to go through and start tearing all this out so what is in there that I can't get will start drying out from the sun. You can see it's pulling right out with that styrofoam. So guys, highly recommend using gloves. I was an idiot the first time. All this little wood, I got 10,000 splinters on my first bunk I did. I felt like I was a day pulling splinters out of my hands. Yeah, you can see how wet that is down in there on that bottom side. So I'll get this removed. I'm going to let that dry for a little while after I get all this removed. And then uh, I'll come back in and start cutting pieces of wood to fit back in it and putting it back together. Alright, so here's where I'm at. I'm going to take a break. I've got all this trimmed down. Took out the insulation. I got a little bit more up underneath the edges here to get took out. I got most of this took out right here. Same down here. I got to take this a little bit more out there. <clears throat> but you can see this edge, it's all cleaned out. So I'm gonna let this all dry out and then uh, go back and start putting wood back in it. So as I'm cleaning up this frame, I went and flipped it over. And this is what kind of got me in the front side. You can see all this wood build up that was underneath this front flap. <clears throat> so that's one of the reasons I went ahead and took this side off and took this bottom channel off because this had actually pushed out. This spot right here actually pushed out of the uh, bottom channel. And whenever I went to put the front piece on for the, the piece that attaches to the this, it actually shoved this piece of wood right in here out, causing the front piece to bulge out right here. And then I had to go back and take this channel off on the front. 
and then recap over like that and seal it down, which was kind of hard. But the main reason it done that was because I couldn't get all this wood out that was glued to the uh, actual metal frame underneath of it. So now that I took this all apart, I was able to clean this all off fairly decent. And whenever I put the new piece of wood in here that goes against this, <clears throat> it'll have a lot of glue on it and should seal fairly good. And I'll also make sure it goes on this wood or uh, metal rail because uh, it did have factory glue. Actually, that's you can see that's what's causing that right there to stick the way it is. But wanted to kind of give you a little bit more detail on this part of it and why. Um, main reason why I took this back one off. So, so a little windy. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. So I got all this cleaned up good. I got the frame cleaned off good. Next step is I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of lou on board to put down on this side, attached to this front piece, and glue it down really good. I had to go back in here, and there's some of this wood just where the, it gotten wet. The glue just wasn't sticking good, so I took a long time with my scraper and just ran over it really rough. Took a lot of extra wood off that was still kind of glued or coming loose. So when I put that new piece of lou on down, to put for the front support, I'm gonna put a lot of glue down on this and make sure I support it on the bottom side really good so it'll press against the new wood. But I'll cut a section out to fit in here and maybe lap underneath the centerpiece just a little bit. And then the same thing for this side over here. So as soon as I get those cut out, I'll come back and uh, show you what the finished product looks like on that. So here's my first piece of paneling I cut. It's going to go on this side, and I'm going to make pretty much the exact same one for the other side. But I'm going to slide this back up underneath here. Hopefully it fits in there good and tight. And I'll cut, take it out, and I'll put a lot of glue on it, and hopefully it'll start setting up. So, got this side glued down. I'm going to install this side. I just want to show you. Put a lot of liquid nail down through there. Put it in the seam all the way around. I'm going to slide this piece of board in and hopefully we'll be good on that first layer and then i just got to clamp it and make sure that uh, it's in good shape for a little while to dry while i'm cutting out the uh, next piece to fill in this next gap like i said I, you could put um your uh styrofoam back in i'm just putting wood back in this gap i really don't Think it'll suffice for what i'm needing um once i got this piece in i'm gonna have to fill in again with more glue underneath here so that way here's the uh, metal to the wood same thing here and the same thing back down there the way it's got plenty of uh, adhesion to it and hopefully doesn't come loose so i think i give you a quick update to this point right here okay so glued all this around the seams all the way around on all the sides. Try to put plenty of glue right here in the middle of this and down that seam over there. I came back, put these clamps on it, put a lot of liquid nail on it. Hopefully this will uh, adhere to the uh, sides real well. Looks like I need to put a little bit more glue in that and clamp it. But uh, I'm going to start cutting out the next piece of wood, three quarter inch piece of plywood, and I'm going to put it inside here while this is hopefully drying up. All right, so another little update. Got this piece in, put some bricks on it, just kind of hold pressure against it, and help get the glue adhered, adhered. So as you can see, this fits almost flush with this piece of uh, metal framing. So I'll put another piece of uh, wood on top of this like I did my front piece. So this is the other side. I still haven't cut it out yet. I just want to kind of do a side to side comparison. You can see it in the sun. But I put the bricks on, like I said, to just make sure the glue's kind of setting up good against the bottom piece. And I put the clamps around the edge <clears throat> to make sure the glue around the edges are uh, sticking good to the wood and the metal frame so what i'll end up doing is i'll put a bunch more liquid nail down here that's what i did under this piece over here 
put a bunch more liquid nail down and some spray uh, 3M glue. I sprayed around all around the edges. Now I'm also going to go back in here and fill in all these gaps like I did up here in this corner. I filled in that gap with some with some sealant and it's also got some uh, glue properties to it as well. Just trying to keep any vapor areas or air pockets out as much as possible. So, all right, I'm going to get this next piece cut and then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do for the top piece. Okay, so this side's done. You know, put the piece in for this. You can see I put a bunch of glue in. That way it <clears throat> hopefully sticks good. This piece is nice and tight. Try to fill in all the gaps good with plenty of wood glue. So that way hopefully everything sticks good. Pretty snug fit in there. I'll grab a couple more blocks and set on top there to help hold some pressure on it and make sure it seats good on top of that. So, there you go for that, and uh, I'll <clears throat> shortly be putting my piece on top of this to finish it, and once that piece is done, I'll go back in along these seams and fill that in with uh, liquid nail and caulking, and also going to fill in all these seams right here again before I move on any farther as well. So, trying to just take up any more air pockets. So this is the final piece of it. Putting it on there, I'm just test fitting it right now. Make sure it fits down along the seams. Flush good. I cut it up to where I cut the piece off earlier. Right in here. Button it up there and it's gonna overhang onto that and I'll put a couple screws down through the top piece like it did on the front. So there's the piece underneath of it. I'm going around now filling all the seams with plenty of sealant and plenty of glue. We'll make sure everything's glued up really good. Plenty of sealing in it. And then I'll stick the new piece on top of all this and start gluing it all down, put some pressure on it. Maybe even go ahead and put a few of the screws around the edges. And once that piece is on, I'll go ahead and start putting plenty of caulking in this outside edge. And I'll start putting my screws back in that. And then also, I'll put screws back in my end piece down through here. That way, it'll help hold this all in place better. So, I'll get this piece on and I'll show you what I got last. So, this is the final end of it. I'm letting everything set up with glue. I put a bunch of glue down here, filled all the glue in on these tracks. I actually put longer star headed screws in here to hold the trim back on. Put a bunch of silicone. And all this track, we had to pound it back up on there to make sure it covered the front piece. This is the same thing down this side. We put a bunch of glue underneath here, a bunch. I'm gonna come back in tomorrow morning after it sets up and put some self-tapping screws in here into the metal underneath of it. And then I'll put some down the center where that metal is. And then I'll put some small wood screws across this end right here, just to kind of help hold everything in place. But I'm gonna let it set like this overnight. That way the glue can set up. Hopefully everything will adhere really good to it. And hopefully be able to mount this back up on it tomorrow and be good to go with the bunks. So let that set overnight, left the bricks on it, setting all night. Feel like it's glued pretty good. I don't know if there's any bubbles or anything. And we'll go along this edge and go ahead and put some uh, self-tapping screws. Put a few down this edge too into this metal beam that way just make sure it don't go anywhere but i left it set for 12 plus hours last night i think i stopped working on it around six yesterday evening it's about 10 o'clock now so should have plenty of time for the glue to set up all all the layers and i had probably about four or five center blocks on it so I had plenty of weight on it to keep everything pressed together so, all right, I'm going to get these taken off and then get those screws put in and hopefully start mounting this thing back up on the uh, end of the camper. So, went around the top here, put some uh, just wood screws in down the edge just to kind of help hold that in place. Put some self-tappers in here along this edge. I am going to go back and put some self-tappers along this line. I ran out of them, but I can go ahead and install the bunk now. 
but see I put some of those longer wood screws in here where I put the wood on the middle I figured these were a lot longer than the uh, factory screws so they'd go inside this wood in the middle and help hold it I went ahead last night and also put screws in these right here that way it just helped keep that trim pulled in tight so help give the uh, glue a little bit more pressure and keep everything sealed up better so now we'll go ahead and get ready to install this back on the uh, end of the camper so what I did is I put some saw horses there put a couple blocks on top of them and that should put me about where I need to be to uh, line that up if anything I might need to shim it just a little bit more up but I think that that's going to get me where I need to be so so I'm going to put this on there thanks so I got this put on took a little bit more shimming some blocks and I had to scoot the saw horses forward a good bit and put another block underneath that on top of the saw blocks but put some of the uh, wood screws and a few of the big heavier screws that came out of it kind of mixed them matched them up so it filled the holes back in good so next thing I'm gonna do is fold this piece of trim or rubber forward put the piece of trim back on it and then uh, should be good to go so let's, uh, let's get this next part done all right folks got it all mounted up here got this seam put on oddly enough that's one of the more difficult things to freaking do to pull this out because it's kind of stretchy rubbery gasket getting it out and trying to get it put back underneath this piece of trim and hold it while screwing it down but on the bright side of things, everything seems solid. I'm up here actually on it. And like I said before, I'm a pretty big guy. About 310, 315 pounds. And it's holding me pretty good. Feels pretty sturdy. I'm bouncing on it now. It isn't falling, so hopefully it should hold the kids well. So I'll get the uh, canvases brought back out and change the final on it.